Hello and welcome to how to conduct a successful teleconference, a webinar in the PDU podcast series. My name is Cornelius Fichtner and with me is your presenter, Jean Dutz. Hello, Jean. Hi, Cornelius. Let me introduce you to our listeners. Uh, here's a picture of you. You are working as a business analyst and you have a particular emphasis on identifying and resolving problems that impede the information flow. I like your driving philosophy here. It says, uh, take advantage of every tool in your problem resolution arsenal. That means that uh, if you have a screw to screw in, don't use a hammer, use a screwdriver, right? That's absolutely uh, correct. Exactly. And also you have a uh, Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts from the California State University of Long Beach and an MBA from Pepperdine. And if I remember correctly, you also were active in the PMI Orange County chapter, right? Yes, I was very active in that chapter. All right. And what makes you qualified to talk about teleconferencing to us here today? Well, basically, it's the experience that I've had in teleconferencing. Uh, many teleconferences have been poorly run. And taking that into consideration, I decided, hey, I can put together something that I think will be very beneficial to uh, anyone who wants to be very proactive, very uh, let's get it done. Let's make sure that the conference, teleconference goes along and I'm getting the participation that I need. The people are getting the information they need. So that was my goal in putting this together. All right, then let's get started with the introduction. Welcome everyone to Teleconferencing Made Easy. There are certain procedures you need to follow if you want to have effective and efficient teleconferencing. To begin with, you want to stop conducting unsuccessful teleconferences, you want to start directing productive ones, and you want to adopt the six success ingredients to guarantee a favorable outcome to this goal. How many times have you participated in a teleconference that adheres to its stated time period, delivers on its declared purpose, and encourages members to participate? Always? Sometimes? Never? How would you like your response to be always. What's teleconferencing? Teleconferencing is an interactive virtual meeting that brings people together in various locations to achieve specified objectives within a specific time period using telecommunication. It's a simple concept. Unfortunately, many project managers fail to use this tool properly. They treat it as merely a means to get their message to as many people as possible without regard to the audience, the content, the cost, effectiveness, and a number of other elements that increase the teleconference's efficiency and effectiveness. And when it comes to the success ingredients, Jean recommends these six success ingredients to us. And we're going to be starting out with the hard tools, and then each of the other boxes that you see here is a separate module in the presentation. Jean, it's all yours again. Thank you, Cornelius. What I'm looking at, or what you're looking at, I should say, are the ingredients to a successful uh, teleconference, the hard tools that you're going to be using, how to manage your time, the content, which is extremely important, the ground rules as to how to conduct, the soft tools such as your voice, uh, the way you uh, bring people and listen to people, and then empowerment, that is the ability to give individuals the uh, means to respond and also to participate actively in the teleconference in order to guarantee its success. So your first success ingredient are the hard tools. How do you define the hard tools? Well, Cornelius, I look at the hard tools as the equipment that you need in order to facilitate the teleconference. Uh, how you're going to link everybody because we're not only nationwide but worldwide and you need to bring people in or you could be across the street frankly but you're going to be con conducting the teleconference and you need the proper tools in order to do that so the following slides will discuss that uh, that hardware what you should select what I believe is is helpful in that in that process Cornelius let's look at the learning goals for this uh, hard tools section there are three how hard tools facilitate the teleconference, how hard tools increase the team's productivity, 
and how hard tools increase productivity, which reflects positively on a PM's leadership skills. If you want to have a productive teleconference, then you need to have some basic equipment most of which is already in place or easily available. Here's a particular one that's extremely important and that's individual headsets. They're easy to hear, it's easier to hear questions and answers. There's better concentration, less distraction to, with, uh, with the co-workers, and it lets passerbys know that you're busy. Oh, so, so they, when any. they walk past your cubicle, they see I'm wearing a headset, and they know, oh, I shouldn't be disturbing him. Shouldn't be disturbing you. I'm not going to have a, a mini conference next to you mm -hmm. while you're in there with your headset on, realizing that you're probably involved in either some type of teleconference or learning right. experience. Yeah, and if you're just having, you know, if you just have the uh, the telephone receiver at your ear, how many times has it happened that somebody walked up to your cubicle and they wave at you and they make signals? But as soon as you have a headset on, that gives you an additional sort of almost like a shield around you. That's right, and it lets you know that you're doing something important, whereas maybe on the phone, oh, I can easily interrupt, but maybe this individual is really deeply involved in a, in, in a very important event, which is what the teleconference is. One of the areas that, in which you do do a lot of teleconferencing is in large meeting rooms. It's really important that there be multiple individual uh, mics uh, in that room, if there's only one, then it really presents uh, presents a problem. So try to find a large meeting room with uh, microphones at each desk whenever possible. It's going to, among other things, reduce side conversations because everyone realizes, oh, I've got my mic here. If I'm carrying on a side conversation with Harry, it's going to be picked up. But when there's a just a mic in the middle of the table, then people tend to have uh, little side conversations if you're having a meeting in a, in a large conference room. I think the ideal place to have a teleconference really is in a small meeting room. Because normally you have individuals at, on your site, but you have multiple sites. And with a small conference room, not only is it more of an intimate experience, but it enables the group to participate more in, in the process. And it's also less of an echo chamber. And there's also less likelihood that people will be carrying on side conversations because it's, like I said, a much more intimate environment. And it's also much easier to get a small conference room compared to a large conference room. And since you are doing a teleconference, you're probably, like I mentioned earlier, doing it with people next door, n in the next state, in the next country. So the small conference room is really the one that would be the uh, one that to select, if at all possible. Toll-free numbers. Now, that seems like a no-brainer. Most places you have access via toll-free numbers, but that's not always the case. But there's a tremendous advantage to toll-free numbers. You have access by international participants. You, there's no charge when participating from a client location, which is really important. Uh, there's also a duration option. You can go on and on and, and not have to worry about, oh, gee, what am I incurring the charges? And it's accessible via a landline or a cell phone. And it's also on-site or off-site accessible. And finally, participant constraints, if any, are very minor. It's just it's a no-brainer to be able to grab a toll-free number, enter it, and not have to be concerned about it. Yeah, and let's just be clear, when you say there is no charge and also the duration options are not so, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Th there is a charge, but when you're at a client site, it's not the client who pays. That's correct. It's the company, it's your company that would pay for it. That's correct. Right, That's and correct. if you have people who are, uh, you know, working out of their home offices, it's not them who pay it's the owner of the toll-free numbers that pays in the end. So that's why uh, we have these two bullets there. That's right, that's right, uh, very much so. And there doesn't have to be a concern about costs, and especially if you're, you know, you're working out of your home, costs can be a very, uh, it's a big part of that, uh, that process. So knowing that hey, I can log in, we can continue to talk uh, for as long as we want, no charge to me. Right, the company will pick it up. The company will pick it up, and that's a very important part of, of having a successful uh, teleconference. 
web conferencing software, uh, Cornelius, has really exploded. I mean, it's uh, it's almost everywhere. There are men, many, many vendors out there. You have Citrix Go to Meeting, uh, Microsoft Live Meeting, WebEx Meeting Center, Rain Dance. Uh, f- there's free conferencing. There's even Skype for Business conferencing, which is a a free conferencing tool. Now. I've had personal experience with WebEx, and I'm very impressed with WebEx and uh, what you can achieve and how easy it is to use. (laughs) It's my favorite no-brainer when it comes to using some hardware. Now, Skype uh, for business, I'm not that familiar with. I had some concerns about quality, but I realized that it's also free to the uh, person that is using it. So yeah, I can tell you a, that. The quality is actually quite good. I use it basically uh, almost every day, I would say. I use it to connect to my business partners. Uh, I call international even. I, I can make international phone calls on it. And I use it quite often to record interviews for uh, the Project Management Podcast. So I, uh, I use it. If, it. if it works great, it's great. And uh, sometimes there are there are some quality issues here. And I'd say out of these here, the, the ones that I uh, would say are the 800-pound gorillas, probably the first one, uh, Citrix, GoToMeeting, and, and WebEx, those are the ones that you see most often advertised and used. Yes, they, they are. And um, one of the reasons is that uh, they're very good. Yeah. The quality is excellent. So, But I'm very glad to hear with uh, Skype. Towards the end of each of the modules, Gene is going to take you through three slides that are always the same. There are going to be benefits, there are going to be tips, and also a take action slide. And this is the first time that we're here, so Gene, take it away. Thank you, Cornelius. Benefits. What is it that I'm getting out of this uh, module? Well, the benefits are you can participate from any location. You're learning how to participate from any location. Also, that there are limited equipment costs, uh, even with teleconferencing versus webcasting. The costs are relatively small compared to the audience, to the cost of having the people there. Flying them in. Yeah. Flying them in or just having them sitting there. That There's a lot of money represented by having flying a bunch of people in or just having uh, people in various uh, conference rooms throughout the world listening. Another benefit is higher productivity, virtual versus on-site. Virtual, I can bring everybody together. On-site, it's like you mentioned, have to fly everybody in. That becomes extremely expensive. And today, where we're looking at costs very closely, it's much better to bring folks together virtually. Yeah, there's always sometimes there are good reasons to have people on-site. For instance, in a kickoff meeting in a project, you may want to bring everybody on-site for a personal face-to-face meeting, but then later on, virtual meetings are quite appropriate. I couldn't agree more. I think that initial meeting where it's face-to-face is extremely important because the beauty of that is that when you're talking over teleconference, unless you have the uh, photo of the person in front of you or some type of uh, uh, camera that's going on, you recall, oh, I remember Fred, yeah. and it really helps in the process to associate the voice with the face. So that's extremely important. And then it also, one of the benefits of the hard tools, it, it pr- improves your leadership skills. What you're doing is you're letting the team know that you want the best productivity tools that you can get for them to use. You want to bring them together. You want to have headsets. You want to have the the teleconferencing, the small rooms. You want to make sure that people can hear and can participate. That's why you want good hard tools to do that job. It may not be obvious for the people to actually realize that, so you may actually need to tell them that this is what you're doing for them. Yes, yes. And that's part of the selling to upper management. This is why we need headsets. This is why trying to get the, uh, the appropriate conference room with the appropriate equipment in it. It really lets them know that we want to be productive, we want to get the job done, we want to contain costs, and we want to meet our deadlines. Right. The last bullet point that you have here is team productivity under improved leadership skills. How do those two connect? Well, the team, once again, is it, the team sees that you're, as the project manager, you're really working for their benefit. That is, so they can be productive. They realize that you're going to go 
to the nth degree to do what's ever necessary so that when we come together we can have a productive meeting. I think that instills uh, respect, loyalty, uh, a lot of things uh, towards the project manager knowing that hey I need a headset I'll let my PM know he'll get it for me. Uh, we need a particular conference room the PM will make sure that we get the, the conference room. Uh, we want to use WebEx. PM can be instrumental in making sure that we get that. Uh, the participants don't have to think about the hard tools. They can focus on why they're there, what the objective is. I don't have to worry about, gee whiz, i got to bring my own headset, or gosh, am I going to have to foot the bill for this WebEx, or things like that. It's, once again, my favorite no-brainer. It allows people to focus on the content, on getting the job done. What tips do you have for our participants in regard to hard tools? Well, there are two tips uh, for hard tools. Uh, the first one is make sure you road test any equipment before you purchase it. Uh, get some type of trial. If it's headsets, you know, you, you want headsets that work, that are comfortable. If you're using a particular uh, web software, you want to make sure that it fits with uh, your needs. You road test it, and all the vendors will give you the opportunity to do that. So be sure to take that opportunity. The other one is make sure all the approvers for the equipment acquisition know the cost-benefit. Um, just don't think, wow, these are terrific headsets. I'm going to go grab them. Uh, make sure that senior management is in line with whatever those uh, costs might be. Um, I remember one time when I decided that I would go out and, and get some uh, some equipment, and uh, I did, and then uh, found out later on that senior management was not happy because they thought it was very expensive. I didn't do the groundwork of demonstrating to them the cost benefit, that how much more productive the people would be with this equipment. If I had done that, then I wouldn't have had to spend time in my boss's boss's office explaining why I did what I did. He still went ahead with it, but it's something that could have been avoided. Now it's time to take action. We've, I've provided you with some worksheets that will assist you in obtaining headsets, uh, venues, teleconferencing software. Now maybe you already have all of this stuff and if you do that's great. However, I think that these worksheets might help you in assessing um, do I have the best headsets for the job? Are the venues that I'm using the best for once again the conference? And what about the teleconferencing software? Is the cost benefit there? So I have a worksheet for each one of these. There's a headset worksheet, a venues worksheet, and a teleconferencing worksheet. And I really urge you to take a look at them and use them in your setting so that you can be even more effective as a project manager.